Welcome again. Right now we're at the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. This is chapter 1, verse 1, and we're reading from verse 1 through to verse 11. This is the introduction to the book of Acts and also the ascension of the Lord. Before I get into this, you know, most people understand that the book of Acts is actually written by Luke, the same man who wrote the book of Luke. Okay, and the reason why they say that, okay, the reason why scholars come up with that conclusion is because both the book of Luke and the book of Acts begin in a very, very similar way. So let's read first the book of Luke, the first three verses, just so that we can get some context of the book of Acts here. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Since many have undertaken to set in order a narrative concerning those matters which have been fulfilled among us, even as those who were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having traced the course of all things accurately from the first, to write to you in order, most excellent Theophilus, that you might know the certainty concerning the things in which you were instructed. Now notice here that this book, Luke, starts out by being addressed to Theophilus, okay? So let's now go over to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1. The first book I wrote, Theophilus, concerned all that Yeshua, Jesus, began to do and to teach. Now, you see how these books are both connected together. And, you know, some scholars call it the Luke-Acts, you know, volume. It's like volume one, volume two. And so this Luke is believed to be the same Luke that Paul talks about in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, speaking of Luke the physician. Now, we come up with this conclusion that Luke was actually the author through tradition and through ancient documents from around this time. So next time we go through the Gospels, we are going to get into it even deeper. We're going to get into all these other extra texts that I keep on talking about. And, you know, I'm so excited because, you know, I'm going to start off the so-called Old Testament that way as well. Okay, I'm going to start off the Old Testament really getting into all kinds of different texts, looking at it from every which way we can look at it, okay? In order to really get a hold of something, in order to really get a good feel for something, we need to look at it from all different perspectives, okay? And this is what we're going to do. We're going to really familiarize ourselves with the Scriptures. Going back again to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1. The first book I wrote, Theophilus, concerned all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day in which he was received up after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. I want to interject here that most churches today, most churches today, claim to be Book of Acts type churches, or at least they say that the Book of Acts is the model church, okay? The Book of Acts spells out for us, you know, paints a picture for us, if you will, what the church should really look like and how the faith of the church should really be like. And you know, one of the reasons why the book of Acts church is so important to understand is because you see these people, a lot of these people actually saw Yeshua for themselves. They walked with him, or at least they saw him. You know, we got the disciples that comprised the book of Acts church and the other people who were involved in the book of Acts a lot of them, you know, even though they're just audience, basically, a lot of them were probably the same audience that Jesus had, okay? These are the same people who heard Jesus himself speak, saw Jesus himself when with their own eyes, okay? This is a very, very awesome time in, in history. You know, when Jesus was crucified, he died, and he rose again, and here we are now, you know, back basically the way it was before Jesus came. You know, he said, I come from the Father and I'm going to to the Father. Remember, he, you know, he said, before I came, 
I was with the Father, and I'm going back with the Father. So it's like I'm going back in the same position I was before. I'm going back in the same state that I was before. And so this is very, very important for us to understand and very, very important for us to dig deep into the, into the Acts of the Apostles, this book. Because, again, this book is comprised of these people who heard Jesus speak, who saw him with their own eyes, who actually got to speak with him. You know, the disciples were there, okay? This is like hot off the press, so to speak, okay? Let's go to verse 3. To these he also showed himself alive after he suffered by many proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking about God's kingdom. You know, it's easy to read about how Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to Mary over here. He appeared, he appeared to Thomas over here. He appeared to some of the disciples over here. But Right here, we got evidence that it wasn't just a little bit here, a little bit there over a period of maybe one day or maybe two days. It says over a period of 40 days, he appeared to people and spoke and preached, continued to preach of the gospel of God's kingdom. And it says he provided many proofs, not just one, two, three, many proofs. Verse 4, being assembled together with them, he commanded them, don't depart from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you heard from me. Remember, Jesus talks so much about the promise of the Father, John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16. For John indeed baptized in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you now restoring the kingdom to Israel? You know, and again, we got to keep this in perspective. Keep this in context. All of these people are Jews, okay? And they have a Jewish perspective, obviously, just as you know, most Jews do today. They have a Jewish perspective of the Messiah, what the Messiah is supposed to do. And, you know, they, they know that the Messiah is supposed to set up the kingdom of God on the earth and to restore the kingdom to Israel, you know, to, to save Israel, to bring Israel back and to restore her. Salvation to Israel and the rule and reign of God's kingdom on the earth. Verse 7, he said to them, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has set within his own authority, but you will receive power. The word power here is the Greek word dunamis, which this is the same word we get the word dynamite from. Okay, You will receive power, explosive power, dynamite power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Kind of reminds me of Samson, you know. You will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, and in Judea and Sumeria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. When he had said these things, as they were looking, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. What a very marvelous thing they saw. Now, I know that most people and in a lot of paintings, you know, and you know if you if you listen to, you know, some of my recent teachings, that you know that the paintings that people do of Jesus is just so deceptive, you know. You know, Jesus didn't go around wearing a white robe. You know, Jesus wasn't crucified with a little napkin wrapped around his waist. He was completely naked. He wasn't just a little bit of blood here, a little bit of blood there. He was really ble like He was torn apart. He was like a raw piece of meat. He died fast. I mean, compared to other people who are crucified, it was horrendous. And, you know, paintings show Jesus kind of, you know, just lifting up his hands and just kind of just flying up to heaven just all by himself. But, you know, you see now, Luke here is not very 
specific. He's not he's not very exhaustive in in his description of how Jesus was taken up. It just says he was taken up. I believe it's a good possibility that he was taken up the same way that Elijah was taken up in chariots, horsemen, you know. Elijah was taken up like that. Why wouldn't Jesus be taken up like that? I mean, he's he's come to fulfill everything. He's come to be the Tanakh in the flesh. I mean, you know, why not? Why not be taken up in this pompous, you know, chariots of fire? And you know that it also says in other documents that Enoch, we know that Enoch was also, it says in the scriptures that just he was gone. He was removed from the earth. But it says in ancient historical documents that Enoch was taken up in the exact same way that Elijah was. It was chariots of fire, horses coming down from heaven, okay? It wasn't just floating up into nowhere. There was a vehicle that he was taken up in. And I think that there was a good possibility that Jesus had the same kind of, you know, the same kind of treatment. You know, right here, it doesn't give you much detail at all. But we can look back in previous times, Enoch, Elijah, and we can say, you know what? They were taken up like that. It's a good possibility Jesus was taken up like that as well. Verse 10, while they were looking steadfastly into the sky as he went, behold, two men, two men stood by them in white clothing, who also said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Yeshua, this Jesus, who was received up from you into the sky, will come back in the same way as you saw him going into the sky. Now, is Jesus going to come back riding a horse? Wow, isn't that an awesome thought? And we know that these two men are actually angels, you know, because it talks about in Scripture many times where it talks about men, you know, especially when they appear in dazzling white, okay? The terms men and angels are used interchangeably in this kind of circumstance. May God bless you with wonderful revelation wonderful insight into all these things. And as you seek him, you will find him. And as you call upon him, he will show you. He will teach you things you've never known before. And he will show you things you've never seen before. Great and mighty things.